All right. Well, I'm sitting out here on the back porch in sunny South Carolina, and I thought I would talk to you a little bit about what you're doing uh, today uh, with the compare and contrast outline. Uh, what I've done on the beginning of the outline here, you can see I've put my thesis uh, statement so that we have a sense of what I'm going to be talking about in my paper and what I'll be outlining. So Ray Bradbury's novel, Fahrenheit 451, is comparable and contrastable to modern society when one looks at technology, freedom, and family in both. By doing this, the reader understands that the novel itself contains several dystopian themes. So that's what I'm going to try to prove. So as you look at the outline, you've already done your introductory paragraph on the, uh, the sheet from the other day with your hook and your background and your thesis statement. So that's something that maybe you, you end up printing out if you want to do that, or you can keep it electronically. But this um, piece you can be filling out electronically uh, on your computer after you get the, uh, the Word document from PowerPoint, or from Blackboard, I'm sorry. So we can look at this, and I'm going to just walk you through this. The body paragraph one um, will always start with a topic sentence. Remember that topic sentence is going to introduce the first point of comparison and the first dystopian idea. It's basically uh, going to tell us what you're going to prove in just this paragraph. And then, of course, then you'll have supporting evidence from the text, a direct quote, uh, how you plan then how to interpret the evidence, explain it to us, C, E, I. You've made the claim with your topic sentence, evidence and now interpretation. Then your evidence from today's society it can be a paraphrase of your own ideas. If, if you want to use an outside source to support, it could be a direct quote as well. Remember having to, to cite that correctly if you use an outside source, something specific from a text. Um, interpretation of that, um, explaining then how it connects to the dystopian theme that you are supporting. Uh, proving and then a closing sentence that ties the paragraph together and I'll talk to you a little bit more about that closing sentence when I show you an example so let's look at this first body paragraph um, filled out and I'm going to show you walk you through this so again that alternating style our topic sentence and my topic sentence for this is uh, the way that Bradbury's characters use technology in his novel are both similar and different to how modern society uses it and this showcases the dystopian theme of social criticism. So I have that I'm going to talk about similarities and differences when it comes to the, compare, the, the point of comparison technology and then I have my dystopian theme. All of those things should be in the topic sentence. If you're only going to look at differences then you only want to say that. If you're only going to look at comparisons then you want to say that. Then I have my direct quote from the novel. And as you can see, I have a longer quote. I don't know if I'll use the whole thing, but I put it there so that I know what it is. And I also put the page number at the end. Um, this is a quote that talks a lot about the violence that's on TV. And so when I then begin to interpret the evidence on here, I say the quote shows how violent and distracting what they watch is. Nothing that uplifts human beings. You can, at this point, you can write it all out in one sentence, or if you want to bullet point ideas that you want to say in your interpretation, you can. Whatever works best for you. I tend to write more. Um, I tend to want to have complete thoughts when I do this outline. But if you want to bullet point key ideas that you're going to then put into full sentences in your paper, you can do that. Then I have my supporting evidence from today's society. Um, and I've bullet pointed these. I said television and mobile video devices are used as distractions. Um, I have a comparison. Today's society watches a lot of television, either on actual television or on the screens on a computer or phone, and much of it is full of violence and violent images, guns and death. Uh, and then I have a contrast in there as well. Television is not what it once was, um, and that's kind of the type of devices that we see. Um, how do I plan to interpret this comparison and this contrast. Well, uh, television still seems to distract the masses. There's a comparison and play to those baser instincts of violence in man in the same way that it does in the story. So I'm going to be comparing, uh, seeing a very strong comparison in the uh, society and the novel. Now I come to the final part, the dystopian element. And I put in a whole couple of sentences because I I wanted to be very specific, but again, you could bullet point the ideas you want to say. 
I said the way that television is portrayed in the story and even used in our society is a form of social criticism. And again, when I put it in my paper, I'll get rid of that first person, but this is a, uh, an outline, so it doesn't necessarily to be, have to be said exactly how you're going to say it in the paper. Uh, illustrating how people tend to retire from life and are entertained by mindless fluff on their screens instead of taking in the world. This is an apt criticism of how people use or misuse technology today. So now I've almost had the entire paragraph done. The last thing you always want to have in a paragraph is you want to put a button on it. You want to uh, have some kind of closing statement. Uh, and what I have is, I said this allows the reader to see how, by looking at technology, that the novel and the way that modern society relies on television, technology, are both dystopian. In, in some ways, I have just taken my uh, topic sentence and turned it on its head uh, and tried to reword it in a way. That's one way of closing out uh, a paragraph, but you want to really restate. You do not, I repeat, you do not want to have a closing statement in a paragraph that introduces the next paragraph. Um, that's something that maybe other teachers have taught you. I want you to get away from that technique. Uh, it doesn't really work very well. It doesn't logically make sense because why would you introduce a new idea while you're still working with the current idea? So let us know you're done with the topic for this paragraph. Then you can introduce the next paragraph in the next topic sentence. And as we see, basically the same structure for your next two body paragraphs in this First, uh, or body paragraph two, I would be talking about freedom and surveillance in my topic sentence and then going through the process of supporting and interpreting. And then my third body paragraph, I would have um, information about sentence, uh, a sentence about family and conformity, and then going through. Now, those are the body paragraphs, which are the meat of your paper. The last thing you're going to want to have on your uh, outline is your final concluding paragraph. And this is just as important because you're going to do a lot of repetition here. You're going to repeat ideas that are going to stick with your audience. So don't give this short shrift. Make sure that you are as specific and detailed in your closing paragraph as you are in your bodies. So you want to restate your thesis. As you can see, there's my original thesis from the beginning. You won't need to rewrite this, obviously, but I wanted you to see, compare and contrast my restatement. And you can see, by looking at that, that in a way, I have the same ideas, but I turned it on its head. So the information that's at the back end of it is at the front end, and the stuff that's at the front end I've put at the back end, which is a great technique to use when you're restating a sentence. If you sw swap the ideas from the front and the beginning, it forces you to str change structure and also, also change how you say it. Once you've done that, then you want to restate evidence that you covered in body paragraphs. And you want to keep it simple. I would say one sentence, um, have one sentence for each of your body paragraphs. So I would talk about the idea of violence on television in both the novel and in uh, modern day society. Then in my second sentence, I would talk about um, how no people in the novel um, use the idea, uh, the people in the novel and today are being watched. And then I would want to have uh, the idea, in my next sentence, the idea of family being one thing in the novel, uh, and but it's many things in today's society, so that there's conformity in the novel, but not so much family conformity in our world today, that we have far more diversity, And those because those are the things I would talk about. And then finally, give something that perhaps relates back to the opening attention grabber as your closing thought. You want to end with a thought that keeps me thinking, so maybe you talk about dystopia, or you relate back to that opening attention grabber that you had uh, in your opening paragraph. But something that gets me thinking, keeps me thinking, and makes me um, still as active participant in your paper uh, as I finish it and as I think about it once you're done. All righty. Well, good luck. Uh, try to have this outline done by no later the beginning of class on Wednesday so that you can begin uh, writing your rough draft in class um, on that day. Hopefully you get done a little earlier and you can begin maybe, maybe even writing your uh, rough draft uh, in class on Tuesday when I return. I'll see you guys. I'm going um, to go out and get some sun. All right. Bye.